Okay, so welcome to this next video on antibiotics targeting the bacterial cell wall biosynthesis. Okay, so uh, the first thing I want to say is we've discussed how uh, we uh, added on this phosphoenol pyruvate group to UDP N-acetylglucosamine. So basically we took a UDP N-acetylglucosamine molecule and we also took a phosphoenol pyruvate molecule, which I'll denote PEP, and we synthesized a UDP N-acetyl muramate molecule here, so NAM. The enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is subject to um, inhibition by a certain antibiotic, and therefore it is relevant uh, to learn its name, basically. Okay, so it has a number of names. We'll start off with the most horrendous one. So the most horrendous name it has is this one. UDP N-acetylglucosamine, so N-acetylglucosamine, uh, free, uh, because the carbon which we are adding this phosphoenol pyruvate group on uh, to is the, the third carbon, so free uh, enol pyruvate, which is the group that we're effectively adding on, because we're not adding the phosphate group, remember. So the whole molecule is phosphoenol pyruvate, but we're only using the enol pyruvate bit. Enol pyruvate, and then transferase. So that is a massive great name. So the UDP N-acetylglucosamine free enol pyruvate transferase. It has a more accessible name, which is, it's also known as the pyruvate transferase, or uh, pyruvial transferase. So, so some people will call it the pyruvate transferase, or some people will also use pyruvial transferase. Okay, so you can also use pyruvial transferase. Okay, and then the potentially most accessible name of them all is just some people will call it MERA. Okay, right. So all of these names refer to the enzyme which catalyzes this, this reaction where you take a UDP N acetylglucosamine molecule, you take a phosphoenol pyruvate molecule, and you convert them into a UDP N acetyl muramic acid molecule. Okay, now the important thing about this enzyme is that there is an antibiotic which inhibits it and therefore inhibits the synthesis of UDP N acetyl muramic acid. And if you don't have any UDP N acetyl muramic acid, you can't synthesize the cell wall. So, what is this great enzyme which inhibits, sorry, this great drug which inhibits uh, this enzyme? It's the drug phosphomycin. So, phosphomycin. Okay, so uh, phosphomycin is an antibiotic which, when you take it, will go into the bacterial cytoplasm, will find this enzyme, will bind to it, and will stop it from being able to convert uh, U um, UDP N acetyl glucosamine into UDP N acetyl muramic acid by adding on the phosphoenol pyruvate uh, molecule. Okay, right. So, that's an important antibiotic, and that's why uh, we looked at this step so far in advance. Right, so now what we need to do is look at what, now we've synthesized UDP and acetyl muramic acid, what are we actually going to do with it? Well, we're going to convert it further. So, we're going to add on a bunch of amino acids, basically. So, let's redraw out the structure of uh, UDP and acetyl muramic acid and then we'll see which amino acids we're going to add on. Okay, so here is our six-membered uh, ring. Here is our um, sixth carbon going up there. We will put our... I'm, going, I'm getting fed up of actually drawing this structure out, so I'm just going to put a box there to denote that amino group with the acetyl group bonded to it. We've then got these two phosphate groups coming off here, and uh, we've then got our ribose sugar down here, which we'll denote by a pentagon and then uh, the uracil organic base over here. Okay, and ooh, that, that's, well, that's a brilliant um, picture of uh, N-acetyl, well, UDP N-acetyl glucosamine, uh, but of course, we've added on uh, this phosphoenol pyruvate structure, so I'll draw this here, and I'll actually draw out the structure of this, because this is the bit that's going to be important now, okay? 
So I'm just going to switch the groups around if you don't mind. I'm going to put the methyl group up there and I'm going to put the carboxyl group down here because the carboxyl group is actually going to be important. We're going to add bits on basically to this carboxyl group. So this is the structure of uridyl diphosphate uh, N-acetyl muramic acid, UDP N-acetyl muramic acid, N-A-M here. What we're now going to do is we are going to convert this to what is known as UDP N-acetyl muramic acid tripeptide or uh, N-acetyl muramyl tripeptide would be what I uh, would call it. So I should probably write that name out in full. Okay, so you'd write this as N-acetyl uh, mur um, muramyl, which is muramyl, and then you'd have a uh, tripeptide like that. So that's what we're going to convert it to. So how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to add on free amino acids. And we're going to add them on, basically, to this hydroxyl group. Um, uh, well, we're going to add them on to this carboxyl group here. So we're going to use this as though it's the carboxyl group of a amino acid. And basically, we're going to then extend on and add on more amino acids, one here, one here, one here, to create the N-acetyl muramyl tripeptide. Okay, so the first amino acid we add on is going to be L-alanine. So let's show that. So basically, we're going to take off this hydroxyl group here, and instead what we're going to do is bind the nitrogen of the amino, um, amino group of the uh, L-alanine amino acid to that carbon. And one hydrogen will come off this amino group, and then we'll go off with this hydroxyl group here to create water. So this is coming off now. Okay, we're taking that off, and we're going to have a condensation reaction to form this amide link. Uh, between uh, this carboxyl group and this um, next amino acid. Okay, so then you have the alpha carbon of our amino acid, and the R group of this is a, um, is a, a methyl group, because we're talking about L-alanine. Okay, and then you have the carboxyl group of your L-alanine. So this amino acid here is L-alanine, and I'm deliberately not drawing the full carboxyl group because we're going to add another amino acid basically on next. Okay, so we've added on our L-alanine. So the L just refers to the fact that it is the larvorotatory enantiomer. And I kind of feel like I've got too much to explain anyway to go into detail of what larvorotatory means. Um, so basically, larvorotatory just refers to the fact that this is a chiral center, basically. So it has four groups coming off it, and if you actually look at the three-dimensional structure of those four groups coming off it, you realize that there are three different, um, sorry, not three, there are two different molecules that you could actually make, basically, that no matter how you change the way you look at them, i.e. you rotate it around, you cannot turn one into the other. You cannot superimpose one on the other. So there are truly two different molecules of this when you have four groups coming off of a carbon like so. And uh, one of the um, two, these two different structures basically are known as enantiomers. They're the mirror images of one another. And uh, you have the larvorotatory enantiomer, which is what this is, and also the dextrorotatory enantiomer, which is uh, denoted D. Yeah, and we will see examples of D amino acids um, later in this video. In fact, we'll see one uh, next, because we're going to add on another, and uh, next we're going to add on a D amino acid, basically. Okay, so we've added on L-alanine onto this carboxyl group of the, um, murama, of the um, N acetyl muramic acid. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add on uh, a glutamate molecule here but it's going to be uh, D-glutamate, basically. So here is the alpha carbon of D-glutamate, and this is a confusing bit, basically, that you really need to understand. Um, we're not, I'm not going to draw the R group sticking out here. Instead, I'm going to draw the carboxyl group of the amino acid sticking out here. So basically, we are having a very unconventional way of linking amino acids together here because here is the R group of glutamate coming down here. And basically, we're going to link the next 
uh, amino acid, not onto the carboxyl group that is uh, part of the backbone of the amino acid, but instead onto the carboxyl group that is part of the R group of the amino acid. So here is the R group of glutamic acid here. This is the carboxyl group that all amino acids have, and this carboxyl group down here is there just because this is glutamate. So here's the amino acid structure here, and this is the R group, and it's glutamic acid. So you have uh, a free carbon carboxylic acid group here, and I'm not drawing the hydroxyl group because we're going to link it onto another group down here. But this, if I encircle everything here, this is basically deglutamate. Uh, so it's the dextrorotatory enantiomer of glutamate. So this is deglutamate. Right, okay, and then the last uh, polype uh, well, the la last amino acid that we link on, uh, it depends on uh, which uh, bacterial species you are looking at. So there's two options for what you link on next. Now, we'll start off with what happens in, uh, in E. coli, basically. And in E. coli, what you do is you link it to a molecule known as diaminopimelic acid. Okay, so I will, just as an offside, I will show you the structure of diaminopimelic acid. So first thing, let's tackle, um, so I'll write its name. Uh, where shall I write its name? Um, maybe I'll get a, another piece of paper, actually. Now. Go back to this piece of paper, and on the bottom here, I will show you what diaminopimelic acid is. Because it's an amino acid that maybe you haven't encountered before, because it's not actually used in... Um, in um, coding for DNA, basically, in, well, in making proteins. It's not a proteinaceous one. Okay, so diamino, and I'm just wondering if I've spelt that right, pimelic acid. I think it's probably only a single L, pimelic acid. Right, that looks better. And it's often just denoted DAP rather than uh, writing out diamino pimelic acid. Now, pimelic acid is the old name for a seven carbon carboxylic acid, like so, so here are seven carbons, where you have carboxyl groups on the two end carbons, like so. So here are carboxyl groups, and then hydrogens off all the other carbons, like so. Okay, so this is the structure of pimelic acid. So this isn't yet diamino pimelic acid, but you can imagine how we will create uh, diamino pimelic acid from pimelic acid. Well, namely, we're going to stick on uh, two amino groups. So to create diamino pimelic acid from this, what you're going to do, and let me get my blue pen, you're going to uh, take off two of these hydrogens, and you're going to stick on amino groups here, basically. So you're going to stick on an amino group onto this second carbon here, and also onto this sixth carbon. So it remains beautifully symmetrical, basically. So you get this amino group here, and an amino group here. And that, that structure there now, is diaminopimelic acid. And you can see why it's an amino acid, basically, because you have, look at this structure here. If I look at this structure here, that has the sort of um, basis for an amino acid. It's got a carboxyl group here, it's got an alpha carbon, and then it's got this amino group down here. And this, all of this, we can treat that as being the R group of the amino acid, basically. So, uh, that's why we can consider diaminopimelic acid an amino acid. Okay, so let's show how we're going to add this structure in on our uh, deglutamate. Right, so we are going to put our, um, so if I get the structure back again, we're going to use this amino group that is equivalent to the amino group of a normal amino acid, uh, an amino acid that's actually used in uh, synthesizing proto uh, proteins. Uh, we're going to bind that to this carboxyl group here. So we're going to get an amino group bound there, like so. And then we've got this alpha carbon here, with our carboxylic acid coming off down here, like so. So that's this carboxylic acid group here, and then that's that. there's the hydrogen coming off this alpha carbon, and now all we need to do is stick on this um, R group here. So it's got these um, five carbons, like so, ending with another carboxylic acid group here. And then 
uh, we've got an amino group coming off this fourth carbon here, and then everything else is just protons after that, so it should be simple enough. So proton, 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 and just four more, more protons, proton, and a proton. Okay, so there we have had it, uh, we have added in uh, diamino pimenic acid onto our structure. So this is diamino pimenic acid. And basically what you find is that some bacterial species use diamino pimenic acid in this um, third position. Others don't, basically. Others use um, lysine instead, and specifically they use L-lysine. Okay, right. Um, so, uh, bacterial species, an example of a bacterial species which uses diamino pimenic acid would be Escherichia coli or E. coli, more commonly known as E. coli. Escherichia coli uses uh, diamino pimenic acid in the synthesis of its uh, N-acetyl muramyl tripeptide. And an example of a bacteria which in this socket would use L-lysine rather than diamino pimenic acid would be Staphylococcus aureus, an example of a, um, well, it's the archetypal example of a gram-positive bacteria. So we have a gram-negative and a versus a gram-positive here. Okay, but... Generally, bacteria will use one or the other, basically. Okay, so I just need to tell you what's the difference. They're actually almost identical structures, L-lysine and diamino pimenic acid, because all the difference is, is that L-lysine does not have this carboxyl group here. Instead, it would have a hydrogen there. Other than that, the structure that you get by putting in L-lysine here is exactly the same, because here is the R group of L-lysine, basically. L-lysine has four carbons, all bonded with hydrogen, and then an amino group right at the end. So that's the R group of L-lysine, apart from the fact that you've got this silly carboxyl group sticking there because of the fact that this is diamino pimenic acid rather than L-lysine. Okay, so they're very, very similar structures, and they're going to do effectively the same thing with regards to um, with regards to uh, cell wall um, biosynthesis. Okay, so this whole structure now that we have here, uh, this um, UDP uh, N-acetyl muramyl group bound now with three amino acids, so a tripeptide, a peptide consisting of three amino acids, this UDP N-acetyl muramyl tripeptide. This is what we've synthesized so far. Okay, now, what we need to do now is we need to convert this into something even bigger. So it needs now to turn into an N-acetyl uh, muramyl pentapeptide, and don't worry, it's not going to get any longer than that. Um, muramyl pentapeptide. So we need to add two more amino acids, basically, onto this structure to um, to uh, complete it. Okay, so I'm going to leave the structure here, um, and we'll turn onto the other page to discuss which amino acids are going to go on, and then we'll come back onto this page to actually add them on, basically. But we'll do that in the next video.